Pro Boxer fans, we are here in Manchester. Eddie, I've just seen you do a general knowledge quiz. I think you were struggling there. If you went for you know a few matches. I'll, I'll be honest with you, like, when they told me the square root of 81 and I asked Caitlin Bennett what the answer was, and she just went to me, nine. And then I thought, of course it's nine. But you just don't test your brain anymore because I have to sit here like a robot and talk to you lot, yeah, basically. So I've Which just basically it. become like a little bit of a sort of uh, away with the fairies kind of person so yeah different kind of questions so, but let's no general knowledge please today of course um airing dms is something you're very familiar with javonta tank davis has done it very sand but today it was sam johnson's turn what did you make of that all yeah i didn't know it was a dm i thought it was an interview okay. so it's a little bit naughty okay but listen all is fair in in love and fights isn't it i mean like you know ultimately he wanted to fuck with Sam Jones. He wanted to mess with their heads, the mind games, whatever. And he decided to press the trigger, pull the trigger on it. You know? How much is it a mission of yours to make Jack Cattrall a, a world champion? You know, a lot of people say he should have been one already. Listen, we represent Jack Cattrall and Regis Progray. So for me, all I do is make fights and say, may the best man win. And then also say, I've also got the world champion at 140. Okay. So Liam Paro fights Richardson Hitchens December 7th in Puerto Rico. And I believe the winner will fight the winner of Saturday night. So good luck to both. It's on you. Campbell Hudson, you're calling it a, a must win for him. I just it's love very, it. I love it. Though. I love it. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's undisputed or for the English title. Sometimes if it's a great 50-50 fight, if there's loads of narrative, if there's needle, mm. if there's history. And I'm looking at Campbell Hatton against Jimmy Joe Flint and I'm thinking, sign me the fuck up. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I can't wait for this fight. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe, more in, maybe more excited about this fight than Catch or Progre. And I love Gomez against Bellotti. I think it's going to be a war. And Pat McCormack, I just think it's a great night of boxing. And we need it right now in this country. Great new arena. It's going to be a great crowd. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, there's a video come out, obviously, you and Turkey Ali Sheikh, and Turkey's talking about February 22nd being a big card. Uh, Bob Arum saying anything outside of Riyadh seems to be there's going to be normal boxing. What the fuck is Bob Arum, though? What, I was going to ask you that. What on earth is he talking about? I mean, where, where is Bob Arum getting his information? Not from the source, which is Turkey Ali Sheikh. Riyadh season Los Angeles was incredibly successful right people talk about oh you know it lost money yeah it was sponsored it was a commercial project a brand project for Riyadh season there was one of the best fight cards i've ever seen in america the stadium was packed eminem was performing it was amazing and then in london they broke all the records 98000 or whatever it was for joshua against dubois like of course Riyadh season is in Riyadh but every now and again, I'm sure His Excellency will want to do an international event. And guess what? It's got nothing to do with Bob Arum. It's completely up to His Excellency and Saudi Arabia what they do. The fact that they delivered us an LA event and a London event, we should be extremely thankful. And of course the focus is Riyadh. But Bob Arum is certainly not qualified to speak on behalf of Saudi Arabia and His Excellency about their plans for Riyadh season because he has no involvement in it. And it's rubbish that he's spouting. So that's my thoughts on it. What do you make of the contractual disputes that he's having with your theme or someone that you've known in the But like, I mean, I feel like top rank, you know, the rumours that Better BF's contract's up, um, Teofimo Lopez is trying to leave, Shakur Stevenson's left, Jared Anderson got beat, you know, Tyson Fury's in his life. Like, I don't see who top rank really have anymore. And, you know, I don't know. I think they're losing their stable. We saw Take Al Sheikh with um, Noi in, in a way. Do you know what's going on with that? Are we going to see? No, him look, Tur Turkey Al Sheikh wants to put the best fighters in the world on Riyadh season, okay. and Naya Inoue is number three pound for pound. So I'm sure he's on the agenda for a discussion. Canelo was out in Japan only what a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Did have they crossed paths at any point? Uh, no, no, I don't believe so. Um, I got sent an interview from Carl Froch, the interview that we did actually in Saudi Arabia. He's put it up on his channel and he's invited you to his channel. Would you, would you take him up on an offer like that? He seems to have taken that bit that we did together in uh, Riyadh. And I mean, if Carl Froch comes to an event and 
he's here and he asked to interview me, of course I'll, I'll interview him. I don't have a problem having an interview with Carl. I don't like a lot of what he says, and I have to be honest, like, I don't like a lot of the stuff he says about AJ, and that's completely up to me, in my opinion. You know, I had a great time with Carl Froch. We both did extremely well for each other. I loved being part of his career. I'm not going to fall out of him, but I don't have to agree with everything that he says. Simple. And, and you know, I don't like a lot of what he says. Just a, a couple a couple left from myself. Conor Ben, when are, we, when are we looking at the last stage of this hearing? Or now, was... imminently, hopefully. So, you know, we'll be finding out soon when Conor Ben will be ready to fight in the UK. Could be December, could be January, could be February, could be March, but it'll be within that region, I believe. You've talked about being the global leaders of boxing with the zone. Mm -hmm. um, it's nearly been a year of PBC and Amazon. What, what do you believe is happening there? Because, you know, I'm sure there was a lot more fights that people might have wanted to see on Amazon. What well, I mean, how, how many fights have we had on Amazon in that year of the PBC? Four? Five, five tops? And one free one? And four pay-per-views? I mean, well, what do you how, on earth, is for somebody how, how on earth do you service a stable of fighters on four shows a year? Five shows a year? Like, it's impossible. So... I don't know what's going on. But as somebody who's obviously very close, to, uh, ear, uh, your ear is very close to the ground, mm. um, are you hearing murmurs of fighters being unhappy from, from I that? I would think they're very unhappy. They're, they're so inactive, PBC fighters. But they haven't got a home. They haven't got a platform or a TV deal that can host and deliver TV rights for regular events. So how can you plan a business when you don't have a calendar of events to service your fighters? It's all down to the TV deal. That is the key kicker for the success of your promotional company. And they don't have a TV deal where a broadcaster is paying them a rights fee for consistent shows. But is that, when you look at Golden Boy, then he shares the same platform as yourselves. Do you believe that that's why they may be a bit more successful right now? Who? Golden Boy, they they with the zone, right? So they've got they've got. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, they don't have many fighters, but they're doing all right. And without the zone, they wouldn't have a business. Fair enough, Eddie. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Your time, yeah.